Um, yeah, hi, my name is Ahmed. I come from the glorious country of Iraq, and I'm a born Muslim. My problem is that um, I practice Islam when I was... Brother, first we request questions from the non-Muslims. Once yeah. all the questions from non-Muslims are over, inshallah, we'll give you a chance. Yeah, but I'm talking about problem only. It's, it's, okay. but, but you said you're Ahmed and you're a born Muslim. I am born Muslim. But now are you a Muslim or not? I'm agnostic. Oh, so now you have left the religion of Islam. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, fine. If you have left the religion of Islam, you can ask the question, brother. Okay. So my question is, how come I don't have the faith that you and the other Muslims have and some of my friends, even though I practiced Islam a lot and I even did Umrah, but I still do most of the sins that uh, are forbidden in Islam, and I sometimes am lazy to do the prayer and the other um, subjects we have to do in Islam. I have read many books and about other religions and conspiracy theories and documentaries and such. I even have seen your own videos in YouTube and there are many questions that go around my head about um, Allah and the Messenger and Muslims in general. And basically the, the most important question is, um, you said in one of your debates or questions that Allah is the creator and he's uncreated. But I have realized how can the uncreated exist and if he exists, um, how can we notice him? How can we see him or hear him or feel him or know of his existence if he's uncreated in our own dimension or so? That's one of the questions. Brother Ahmed said that he is a born Muslim. He comes from Iraq. He read the Quran, he read the books, but he commits many sins. He believes maybe sometimes he's agnostic and he's lazy for praying. Brother, before I answer your main question, if you do sins and if you're lazy for praying, that does not make you a non-Muslim. As long as you believe that praying is fard, sometimes you miss, it's a sin. It's a major sin that you sometimes don't pray, but that doesn't make you a non-Muslim. If you say praying is not required, then you're doing kufr. But if sometimes you do sin, sometimes minor sin, sometimes major sin, it is haram, it's forbidden, but that does not throw you outside the fold of Islam. There are sometimes vasas of the shaitan asking you, oh, you're a Muslim, but this is wrong in Islam, this is wrong, and it does deviate the person's mind. At that time, maybe your iman may be low, but these things should not make you consider that you're non-Muslim. Regarding a question, that I mentioned in my speech, and you're right, that Almighty God is the creator, but he himself is uncreated. You ask the question, how can the uncreated, how can we see the uncreated, and how it's possible? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is khaliq, is the creator. And by definition, he's uncreated. Because normally people say that when they try and prove in logic, that everything has a creator who created this table, the carpenter, from where he got, from the tree, who created the tree, so it goes back to Allah. So when many of the people try to convince an atheist, they try and say that everything has a creator, and then they get trapped when the atheist asked him who created Allah. So if you hear my tapes, I never go that way. I ask the atheist that how did you come to know about the universe, how did you come to know about the functioning of the stars, of the sun? And he says, and goes back, that the creator. So it's the vice versa. So if you know how to deal with logic, you don't trip over this problem with the atheist trap. The Muslims or the believers by saying, who created Allah? By definition, Allah is uncreated. And if you ask the question, who created Allah? If you have heard my tapes, I give the reply. That suppose a person comes and says, that my brother John. Yeah, I know, I saw that, I heard that's funny, but I mean, how does he exist if he's uncreated? Not... Um, that is Allah. Uncreated. Yeah. How that's can the he difference exist? between you and Allah. How does he exist? means he was existing. From... He doesn't have a beginning. You and I have a beginning, that's human being. So that is the difference between us and Allah. You can't say that Allah has to be like us. If Allah is like you and me, why should we worship him? I see, but um, have you heard of the phenomenon, the Big Brother? 
used by various orders and political agendas to control the people and such by implementing it into multiple gods and then later on it became a monotheistic religion all over the world to make it easier Big for the Brother, people to... Big Brother, sorry, I've never heard of the religion Big Brother. It's not a religion, it's um, like an, a theory, an idea, basically. For what does it say? Yes? What does this idea say? What does it say? Is that when you have a big brother, it's easier for you to live life. When you have someone watching you the whole time, understanding you the whole time, protecting you the whole time, being with you the whole time, and you can talk to him, although he never talks to you back, maybe in your dreams, do it to your mind and such, it's easier for you to live. While a human who does not have a big brother and is not easily controlled into doing so and is having complete freedom is a danger for the major ruling powers and such. So what does it say? I don't understand. Big brother may be there, big brother may not be there. So what does it, what does it have to do with Islam and God? What does it have to do? Because basically Allah is watching the whole time. He so you want knows. to say that Allah is like a big brother? Indeed, you use him for your protection so you won't be scared. You know what I mean? See, this is the hypothesis. Hypothesis. If you have heard, how do I convince an atheist? If you have heard my answer that you said that you're agnostic, you're atheist. Yeah. So first thing I do to an atheist is I congratulate him. What? I congratulate him. Okay. Have you heard my answer of atheist? Yeah, you congratulate them and stuff. But I haven't seen your debates with the atheist. I just saw your answers on some questions. Fine, so you haven't seen the answer of atheist? No, but I've seen your debate with David William Campbell. And David that's William Campbell is not an atheist. Yeah, yeah. Now, when an atheist tells me he does not believe in God like your theory of Big Brother, yeah. and if you believe in that theory, I will ask you, first thing I do to the atheist, I congratulate him. You know why? Yeah, because they think and they don't follow what their parent does and such stuff like that. No, no. I congratulate him because he is not doing blind belief. The other people are doing blind belief. He is a Christian because father is a Christian. He is a Hindu because yeah, father exactly. is a Hindu. Most of the Muslims are Muslim because father is a Muslim. He is thinking. He says there is no God. He has said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, La Ilaha. The reason I congratulate him is because he has said the first part of the Islamic Shahada, Islamic creed, La Ilaha. The only thing I have to do is Illallah, which I shall do, Inshallah. Mm. So if you have heard my answer, an atheist becomes an atheist because he believes in science, he believes in logic. So I ask him that if an equipment is bought in front of him, which no one in the world has ever seen, and if the question is asked, that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this new equipment? What is the answer? Of course, he's going to tell you the producer or the maker of this equipment. Creator, producer, maker. So when we ask him questions that how did this universe come into existence, he will talk about the Big Bang. This what we're going to talk is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. Avalam yaral lazina kafaru, anna samavati wal arda, kaan taratkum ftaknauma. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. This what you came to know 50 years back is mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? Well, in various civilizations in like 2000 or 5000 BC before Islam came or Christianity itself, there was various civilizations that are good in astronomy and they know more about our solar system than we do now, sadly. Brother, of, brother, brother, your knowledge of science is little, not in depth. I do agree. There are certain things which were known as hypothesis. For example, for example, we came to know we were proved that the earth was spherical in 1577. I know that in 6th century BC, there were Pythagoras who believed that the earth was spherical. But the same Pythagoras who believed the earth was spherical also believed that the earth was the center of the universe, which is wrong. You show me one civilization which believes 100% what the Quran has mentioned. I challenge you. What you say, so do you mean to say there was a person who said, okay, this civilization, out of 100 things, these two things are right. Out of 100 things, these five things are right. Out of this 100, and pick 10 choose. Who can do that? No one besides the creator. Even if you know that there were 10 different civilizations, hundreds of civilizations, there is not a single civilization that you know in the past which knew 100% of science what we know today. 
So where is your logic? Where is your theory? I do know that certain things were hypothesis, which were proved later on. But there is not a single civilization which knows everything what is mentioned in the Quran. So the answer goes back to the original question, who could have collected this in the Quran? Someone 1400 years back, could he do and say, okay, out of these 100 things, these three are right. Out of these 100 things, these two are right. Out of this, it's not possible. <laughs> Mathematically, it's not possible. Well, you never gave the idea of extraterrestrials or so. I mean, knowledge is power. And brother, I'm asking you a simple question. We are not coming to have a debate. Yeah. I'm asking you a question, point out a single civilization. You're asking something else. Yeah, we are right. not here to discuss. You can come in the room and discuss. You ask a question, I'm giving you the answer. You gave about old civilization. I told you, you're right. But out of 100 things, 98, they were wrong. So I'm asking you, who could have mentioned this in the Quran? You're talking something else now. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm asking a simple question, 2 plus 2 equals how much? You're saying, I'm telling you 3 multiplied by 3 is how much? I'm asking a name, you're telling that, where do you live? Yeah, I'm asking a simple question, name me a single civilization which has everything what was mentioned in the Quran. Do you know of any or not? Yes or no? Well, not everything, of course. Even not 10%? Why? Babylon knows of some, most of the planets and such. Planet is not the only thing mentioned in the Quran. There of are course. thousand things mentioned in the Quran. To say what thousand things are mentioned in the Quran, 10% would be equal to 100 things. Did Babylonian civilization knew about 100 things mentioned in the Quran? No, because they don't have the idea They knew of five or six things. In percentage wise, very small. So of course. Who can be the author of the Quran besides the creator to know what is right, what is wrong? Today, science has established the hypothesis mentioned by Babylonian so many centuries back is today proven. So these were hypotheses in the past, which out of them many have been rejected, some have been accepted. So to collect all which is 100% correct has to be from the creator and no one else. Hope that answers the question.